Hey everyone, I'm Brianna from Boom and welcome to Boom Chat. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Bowen McCurdy and Caitlin Musto, the awesome creative team that's bringing you the spectacular new series, Spectre Inspectors. True believer Noah, her cynical little sibling Gus, credulous cameraman Co, and Noah's skeptical best friend and secret crush Astrid, head to one of the most haunted towns in America to prove that ghosts exist for all the social media likes. The investigations of hauntings uncover something more devilish than just a couple of ghosts, something that will put Noah and Astrid's relationship to the test and reveal the centuries old sinister secrets of the town itself. All right, Bowen, Caitlin, oh my goodness. Okay, so I have to admit, for a YA comic, this first issue actually made me a little scared. I was like, oh my, what is happening? <laughs> I loved it. Um, where did you both get the idea for this story, Ghost Hunters Dealing with the Paranormal? And how did the two of you end up working together? Um, so I've always been a fan of horror. Uh, I watch horror movies every week for since I was 13. Um, to the point where uh, Caitlin and I had considered ghost hunting ourselves. Um, <laughs> it turned out to be very expensive, so we couldn't do that. But instead, we thought maybe we could do a comic. Um, so we're living vicariously through our characters here. Oh, I love that. Okay, Caitlin, what, what uh, sparked this for you? Um, I have always since I was a kid, been into ghost stories and um, supernatural, like, experiences, that kind of stuff. My family really believes it, so, like, we're all into it, um, and I was really excited when Bowen uh, came to me and said that she wanted me to come on as a co-writer for this comic that she had been planning and when I heard about the characters and the story I was really excited um so it kind of just like developed from there and um we actually met back when we were in high school and um we've known each other since we were like 14 we became really close at like 17 and that's like our friendship was based on like doing stories together and creating like characters together and stuff like that. So went to college together as well. <laughs> and after school, we graduated and here we are. So we graduated in 2018. We're really excited to have our book come out this year. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so fantastic. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what's it, what's it like working with your friends? I'm sorry, I'm going off book here, but like, <laughs> oh, what no, no worries. Like the two of you working with your friends? It's a dream come true. Uh, it's it's so nice to be able to sort of mind meld um, with someone you know very well and be able to uh, overlap your ideas with someone else who shares similar interests. Um, it's it knocks off a lot of the editing process since you know we just talk it out. Uh, yeah. We only had like four drafts um, since uh, a lot of it is already like the kinks are fixed immediately. Yeah, having two eyes on something, like two sets of eyes is like very helpful. And also since we've known each other for so long, it's kind of like the ideas will happen and then we're like, oh, is that, is that what you thought? Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's pretty natural. So, and yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Getting to work with your friend. Oh my goodness. I love that. Okay. So my next question for the both of you is, are these characters based on anyone? And is Cape Grace based on an actual haunted place? Uh, Cape Grace is actually based on a place in southern New Jersey uh, called Cape May. <laughs> um, it is a place that I've been going to for a couple of years. And Bowen and I actually got to go together um, two years ago. And that's like after we had figured out we were doing this story and we were like, this place is really cool. It's like got a lot of like haunted history and like really old Victorian buildings and stuff like that. Um, and like the setting is just, it's this beach town and it's really, really like quaint, but also it has this underlying like feeling of creepiness, but in a good way. <laughs> so yeah, that's, it's a really cool place. Awesome. And so what about the characters? Uh, the characters are pretty much just all of our friends meshed um, into 
four different people. I'm sure some of us slipped in there somehow under the radar, um, but they're, they're really just based off of people we know and uh, <laughs> ideas that we're, we're into with character tropes. Awesome, I love it. Okay, so um, Bowen, you did the art, is that correct? Yes. I mean, awesome. <laughs> I, it's beautiful, I love it. Um, how would you describe your art style? And when you are not working on comics, what's your medium of choice? Um, okay, so I, my art style is pretty much just a Frankenstein of American, European, and Asian comics. Um, <clears throat> I try to draw inspiration from everywhere. So it's not just comics, it's fine arts, it's movies, it's, uh, you know, books. Um, I think that I heavily rely on color and lighting, um, especially with horror, it's, it's important to utilize your color. Um, so I've, I've sort of developed that into my style more as I started working on this. Um, and what was the second question? Um, what's your medium of choice when you're not working on graphic novels? Um, definitely digital. I, I work, live in a very small space. Um, I'm in New York City, so space is sort of a luxury. Um, <clears throat> and working on the iPad helps me to uh, just work anywhere. Uh, so it's really convenient for me specifically. It's also That's super awesome. easy because I need to undo a lot and I can't do that with traditional. <laughs> That's wonderful. I love that. Um, you were talking about your color. And honestly, um, as a person who like, you know, looks at comics all the time, like I love how bright and, and full your use of color is, especially for something in horror. Cause like you tend to not see that a lot. You tend to see a lot more muted colors. And so I really appreciated how all of those colors were super, super bright. And it just, I don't know, it sort of even added to the creepiness for me because I was just like, oh my God, it's so bright, but there's like <laughs> these things going on that are freaking me out and I love it. Uh, comics are really hard to do with horror. Um, horror, you know, in movies you have jump scares and uh, you can edit to you know, pacing. Um, with comics, you don't really get that suspense of tension. So you sort of have to rely on the environments to uh, fully... Uh, create the atmosphere. So color was a really big part of this project for me. It absolutely, it, you killed it. It worked. I was like, I was in it. I can't wait for the next one. Um, okay. So Caitlin, I'm going to ask you, how sure. has your love of horror influenced your writing? I have a very interesting relationship with horror as a genre because I, if anybody asked me like what do you like about horror movies and blah 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 like I I don't like a lot of horror movies um I have a very specific like taste when it comes to them and it's really like the ones that I have really enjoyed like horror stories that I really enjoyed have all been horror stories that make me really really invested in the characters things like I really want to see them get out of this like this is like I I'm I'm pulled into them instead of like just the story because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of horror that I've seen kind of relies on like it being scary and the characters like being picked off one by one or like it's kind of like why would they do that that's so stupid like mm -hmm. it's that kind of thing where like I could never like connect with a lot of those characters so when I started writing like I've been writing since I was a kid but like when I got into writing like more spooky like stuff more comics like that drawing comics like that like I I wanted to put what I loved so much about the horror movies that I did really really enjoy into that writing because I was like I want to make people care and I think that it's scarier when you care about them because then you're like there's the stakes are higher for the reader and it makes the payoff like that feel that much greater Yes, absolutely. I agree with everything you just said, because I already love these characters and I am so concerned for each other. I'm so, I'm so glad. <laughs> um, Bowen, same question. How has your love of horror influenced your writing and your art? Uh, it's very similar to Kat. I, I just really want uh, the characters to be the shining star of this book. Um, it's, it's so important to connect to the characters. They're what drive the story. So 
um, that's that's pretty much my answer to. <laughs> that's great. I love that. Okay, so earlier it, when we were chatting, um, y'all mentioned that you started sort of ghost hunting yourself. <laughs> So my question is, um, where have you been that's famously haunted? And if, and also what are some of your favorite uh, stories from those experiences? Uh, I mean, when we were on our trip to Cape May, um, we actually ran into uh, a ghost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we went on a ghost tour um, through the town and we wound up at an old home that I believe did a lot of seances back in the day. It, yeah. It's sort of a hub for ghost hunting. Um, and while we were outside, I saw through the window, a woman, a woman who was, uh, just like walking around, uh, the windows. And I asked the, um, the guide, uh, if there was anyone in the building at that point, And he told me, no, um, so he could have been lying, um, but it's, <laughs> it's more fun to believe him um, and and just, you know, believe that there was something supernatural going on. Oof. All right. OK, Caitlin, what about you? Um, I have the answer to this question is that I have had a lot of ghost experiences since I was a kid, which is like sort of how this how I got here. <laughs> um, but like. I, um, I really loved being in Cape May, but like, I, I have been to a couple places that were like haunted. I don't know if famously, but, um, I stayed in like a haunted hotel room in this town in Pennsylvania called Jim Thorpe. Um, that was really cool. I, I really just love old buildings and old architecture because there's so much history, but, um, my favorite like ghost story was from when I was a really little kid and it was it's kind of like my first memory um I was like a, I was like three but I was with my mom and the cool thing about it was that we both saw it so like it's I had somebody to corroborate my story <laughs> even though I was like a little toddler and my mom and I were both like are, do, do you see that too <laughs> it was in one of her friends or her old friends houses and that kind of like cemented the the just fascination that I've had like my whole life in it. So yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um yeah, like I so you know, I'm in Los Angeles and so I have absolutely been to the Queen Mary. And so it's, Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And there are certain places that you know you walk in and you can just feel something is there and so it's so interesting but um that's so cool that the two of you like went ghost hunting that's so awesome and I love that like that feeds into your story because you have actual experience with it I love it yes okay there was um, sorry just ahead. like one more no, little no, tidbit that ma I like remembered as we were as you were saying that but like Bowen yeah, and yeah. I before like Bowen said before we were like gonna do it but it turned out to be expensive but like we wanted originally to do like a ghost hunting podcast <laughs> where we like went to like haunted places in New York and then talked about it while we were there. And that was like going to be the thing. But then we were like, God, all this equipment is really, <laughs> really kind of out of our, out of our price range. But like maybe one day I would, I would still love to do it. It's something that I'm still very interested in. <laughs> maybe one oh, that's day. awesome. I, I hope that uh, the two of you get to explore that more because it, obviously you're so deeply interested in it. So I really, I really <laughs> want that for the two of you. And I would follow that. I would watch that. Let me know when that happens. <laughs> um, okay. So final question that I have for the both of you, obviously, I think I know the answer to this question. Um, but do either of you believe in the supernatural and demonic possession or demons? <laughs> Obviously, I think that's a yes, but I don't want to speak for either of you. I do. Um, I believe in it solely because I've just had so many different experiences throughout my life. Ghostly ones. I've never run into a demon yet. <laughs> um, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> but um, I, I, it's hard for me like not to believe it solely because there's just so much like evidence that I have to back it up. Um, but I completely like understand like how people like people that has haven't experienced this. Some of them just don't believe it, and that's totally like understandable. Sometimes you got you have to see it to believe it. Um, with demonic possession, I it is it likes 
it's something that is very scary. <laughs> um, I, I've heard, like, st- I watch so many, like, ghost shows and podcasts and all kinds of things. So, like, I lean towards believing it because I'm like, how are there so many, like, recorded instances of this and it can't be true? But also, like, suspend your disbelief a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's like a thing where I'm like, you kind of hope it's not true. <laughs> mm-hmm. But you're like, but it must be, right? <laughs> so. Okay, Bowen, what about you? Uh, for me, I, I'm a little bit more skeptical. I, I like believing in it. Um, I definitely believe that there are things out there that I don't understand and that most people don't. Uh, whether that comes in the form of a classic ghost or demon uh, is up for debate. Um, but I do, I do, like you were saying, um, I believe that places get like little traces of bad things that happen there. There's definitely a vibe every time you enter something horrible, um, or, you know, people linger after they're gone. But I, I, again, I don't know if that's the classic supernatural thing that everyone thinks it is. Um, but it's fun to believe. So, you know, I'll, I'll lean into it. Oh, this is so awesome. This was so fun talking to the two of you. Uh, I'm so excited for more Spectre and Spectre adventures. I cannot wait. Um, Thank you so much for your time. It's been so lovely chatting with the both of you. And for everybody at home watching, be sure to pick up a copy of Spectre and Spectre's number one in stores now.